Today I'll be going through a complete guide on how to perform a linear static analysis on an extremely simplified two components assembly which will be drawn in CAD software Catea and then exported in Hypeworks to run the analysis. Here we can see the final result of the actual simulation where the stress distribution across the entire assembly is presented. This type of simulation is extremely useful because you can determine the weakest point of the structure and use them for optimization of the entire assembly, hence bringing up the actual performance of the structure. So the first step is to actually design all the parts that you want to analyze in an assembly and I've done that in a 3D modeling software cut here and the key tip to this is to actually keep everything really simplistic because it's going to make your life easier when it comes to actually meshing and running the analysis in FEA software. And I also have a two separate parts that combine the entire assembly. I am bringing those two into one product. It is worth mentioning that although I made a perfect fit between my parts, you can add tolerances between them and that would just result in a more realistic simulation when we do the analysis. And here we go, there's a final assembly of two parts. As you can see in my case it is perfectly aligned but I want to show you how to put them together if they wouldn't be. So imagine that you have a situation like this, so what you have to do is pick a contact constraint tool and justify the interacting surfaces between both parts. Then as you update it, it brings those two surfaces at the same level. And if you repeat the same process across the all surfaces that interact in your assembly, now you have a product that you can bring into FEA software and run the analysis on. And now if we take a closer look into this assembly, we can tell that it is perfectly aligned and ready to be extracted into the FDA software to run the analysis. And for the convenience of this video, I'll probably keep it like this. Now what you want to do is take this assembly, go File, Save As, and save it at any place you want to save it at and give it a random name, in this case I'll go product for tutorial and what you want to make sure is save it as STP file press save, it's gonna load and it should be done like this now what you have to do is open your Hyperworks software click uh, import geometry file selection, go to the place where you've saved your file from CAD press open and click import. Now you can see a 3D wireframe geometry pops up of the assembly that you've saved from your CAD software. Now if you go to the model toolbar and click on components you can see that there's those two separate uh, parts that you've imported so the first and most important step of the analysis is to actually mesh those two components. So by pressing F12, go to selecting all the surfaces and leaving all the settings the same. You can see that a 2D mesh has been generated for those two separate components. Now what's essential is checking the quality of those meshes. So go 2D quality index and ComQI display the actual quality of those elements. In my case it's it's perfect, but let's just say if you have a high value of ComQI, I like going smooth, selecting all the elements that are displayed and go smooth. That will bring the ComQI value down, hence bringing the actual quality up. So knowing that the quality is really good on the 2D elements, we want to convert these 2D elements into 3D elements. Because as you can see now, it's only on the outside surface of geometry.
So what you want to do now is go to your model menu and select part and make it current. So I made inner shaft current, now go 3D Tetra Mesh, select the display elements and split quads into trials function. Then leaving all the other properties the same, press mesh and you'll see the generation process of 3D elements. Now you have to do the same procedure for the other parts, so make it current as well, so all the 3D elements are going to be generated into that part section. Go through the same process, press mesh, and you should end up with this result. Now if you look across those components, you can see that now they are filled with 3D elements inside of it, which is what we are looking for. However, on the outside there's still 2D elements left. For this reason, you have to delete them. Go press this delete button, go elements, select the element function, go by config and select trier and what trier 3 function, press delete and do the same for, for all the quads. Now as you have deleted you can see that there's only 3D elements left in this assembly. Now we finished the meshing of the assembly which is probably the most complicated part of this process. What you have to do now is create a material and I'll be using a steel material which features the standard properties of the steel which are displayed over here. For this material we have to make property. To create property you name, I named the steel property, made it P solid, make sure you select P solid and select the material that you've created. Now as you've done that create both components, press assign and press the steel property that you've just created. After this, we can start generating the contact surfaces between geometries. In this case, because it's a shaft, there's only two contact surfaces that need to be determined. Now you have to select contact surfaces one by one. So if you hide other parts, so we leave with this red component, and you select elements and since we are solid body click add solid faces and now you can click on the faces that are interacting with the other body of the assembly and now as you've selected all the contact elements press add and you should see the contact surface elements has been generated on this component. Now you have to repeat the process on the other geometry, however it's going to be on the inside part, on the inside of geometry just because that's where those two components interact. Keep in mind that if you have to generate contact surfaces in a more organic geometry, you would have to reduce the angle that has been displayed there. But in this case, it, sh it, it worked out really well. Now you can see the contact surfaces interacting with each other. And for, this, for those two separate contact surfaces, you have to generate a contact group so that three different contact types, slide, freeze, and stick. So in this case, it's gonna be stick, just because one component is sticking into another one. After this, you have to select the slave and master components. Slave component is, in this case, is the inside red part, is always the inside one, and the master is the component with is placed on the outside. Now the only thing is left to, set out to determine the boundary conditions on this geometry. So firstly, click on the load collector 
and determine the SPC, which is basically the constraint where the element is going to be hold at at all six degrees of freedom. So now you have to go analysis constraints by holding shift select the elements that in your case are going to be constrained and held in place and by create by selecting create you'll see a lot of these triangle elements which represent the constraint in all six degrees of freedom now what i want to do is apply a moment at the end of the red element to do that you have to create a node you have to go geometry create nodes and press on the node now by selecting as node function and pressing on one element of the geometry you get all the exact dimensions of this particular element by adding some values in y direction you get this node which is flying in space to collect to connect this node and all the elements you go 1d rb3 select this node select all the related elements to this node and press create Now as you have this type of structure, you can go create another load collector, which is going to be the moment now. And go analysis, moments, select the just created node, apply the appropriate moment value. And then you will need to specify the direction of the moment. So you can use two and line elements to justify it. Keep in mind that you use right hands rule when determining the direction of the moment. As you have everything set up, the last step is to determine the load step of this analysis. To do that you right click add load step and it's going to be in this case, it's going to be a linear static load step uh, for SPC. You select SPC and for load, you create, you select the moment. To run the simulation, you have to go up the struct and make sure that all the folders are created appropriately to make sure nothing is missing and save the simulation at a separate folder. Now by making sure that all the settings are the same as displayed on the screen, click Obdestruct. This will run the simulation and hope that there is no errors that gonna come up. Although my computer is pretty old, I do not have any issues waiting for the simulation to run and it probably gets it done in less than a minute. As the analysis is going to be completed, a analysis completed, a message is going to pop up and just press on the results button. So now as it has been loaded up, you can see that there's two separate components which you can hide each of them and review each individually. To review the results, just press on the contour button. You can see the displace and all the stress values. In this case, press on the stress and click apply. And here are the results. To avoid any singularities present in the simulation, just uh, apply a simple averaging method. And now you can see, you can actually view the independent um, parts of this assembly and see how the action, how the stress builds across its geometry. You can select independent elements to see how it develops only in that particular area. And then you can compare those results against the inner and outer part of the shaft. Using these results, you could go back to your CAD model, 
alter the geometry and run the simulation again and see how that changes the actual stress distribution because you can use this as an optimization tool of the assembly. It is worth mentioning that the sharp corners highly concentrate the stress hence to reduce that you could apply fillets on that in order to make the assembly stronger. Along with that you can review the actual visual representation of how the assembly displaces as it is exposed to the load condition applied. I've tried to make the tutorial as easy as possible and hope that helps however I totally understand that the software is not the most user friendly hence for the beginners it's probably going to be more complicated and more basic tutorials will probably have to be reviewed before going through this one anyways I hope this tutorial helps you out and if you want to see any other tutorials or have any questions regarding this procedure Please leave a comment in a comment section below and leave a like if you liked it and leave a dislike if you didn't.